Hi everyone, Phil Travis here, and um, welcome to uh, Political Science. Uh, this is our first lesson, and this week is a very brief, brief uh, lesson on political society. And when I say political so society, I mean this is kind of a basic introduction to political science and politi in politics. But when I say political so society, I'm referring to um, the political nature of our world, if you will, the political nature of our country, of our government, of our political parties, and so forth. Politics matters, and oftentimes, you know, as we pay attention to politics or we don't pay attention to politics, but if, you know, oftentimes it can be extremely frustrating. Um, you know, we often have the sensation that, uh, you know, politicians don't always tell the truth. We have the sensation that politicians don't always represent us. Um, politics can be very frustrating. But politics really, really matters. And the reason it matters is because the outcome of political decisions, of poli elections and so forth, will result in major determinations about who pays how much in taxes, about um, how much the air or the rivers are polluted, uh, or not polluted, about how much people get paid, about issues of health care, about whether you go to war or not. These are all political decisions that are made in political societies. And every individual in the country should educate themselves on the political system and be able to act as a rational, reasonable individual within that system because it is that system, whether you like it or not, it is that system that will make extremely important de decisions that will pertain to you, whether you like it or not. It's extremely important in a political society like ours. Our society is a representative, representative society. Um, it means that, that we have a voting populace that the government theoretically represents. And so in a representative constitutional society like ours, it's very important that the voters and the citizens uh, have strong ability to think critically about issues. We need as citizens to develop our critical thinking habits, and that's something I hope we'll do in this class. We need to develop our critical thinking habits so that we can think rationally and reasonably about important issues and not emotionally. Uh, politicians will often try to encourage you to think emotionally about issues. And it's extremely important that in our political society, we think about issues not emotionally, but rationally and through good reasons and good argumentation. Um, being able to do that will empower you as a voter and it will allow you to have a voice in the ultimate political path of the country. And that will have a tremendous impact, a tremendous effect on the ultimate decisions that are made in the country, that are decisions that will affect you. Aristotle, who was a student of the great Greek philosopher Plato, um, referred to politics, he's the ancient Greek philosopher, he referred to politics as the master science. And in this respect, he meant that it encompassed every component of life, that effectively politics and political decisions factored and mattered to every person on every level. And so thereby, it kind of encompassed all things that society does, from the standpoint of what it does environmentally to the standpoint of what it does in terms of uh, domestic security, in terms of international relations. It encompasses every aspect of the spectrum of life. Political power which is not to be confused with political science. Political power, which is what politicians, when you watch people you know, stumping for the candidacy, um, they're, they're trying to gain political power. Political power basically means the ability to get others to do what you want them to. And in going back to ancient Greece, and the reason we're talking about ancient Greece, of course, is because ancient Greek civilization was really the first Western uh, representative civilization, and for that reason it was highly influential on the founding of many Western 
representative societies like our own. In ancient Greece, there's a famous Socratic dialogue. Uh, the, uh, the works of Socrates, who is Plato's teacher, have you guys, I hope, I hope everybody's heard of Socrates. Socrates was the great, great Athenian philosopher. He died in 399. He was sentenced to death by the Athenian government for allegedly corrupting the youth. Um, he was a philosopher and a teacher. And Plato was his most well-known student. Aristotle was Plato's most well-known student. Socrates, all he never wrote anything down. Instead, Plato recorded all of Socrates' works, and they were recorded in the so-called Socratic Dialogues. And these are the various um, philosophical texts um, relating to the lessons of Socrates. Gorgias is one of the original and, and, and most significant Socratic dialogues. I mean, they're all original. Uh, Gorgias is one of the most uh, significant Socratic dialogues, and it's a dialogue that conveys a lesson about politics and about political power. Gorgias was also a, he was a Greek political mind and a philosopher, and Gorgias um, really um, explained well what political power was and that was political power is the ability to get people to do what you want them to do regardless of what was true or false effectively for Gorgias there was no truth there was no knowledge all truth and knowledge really meant was the ability of to get people to agree with you um, Gorgias was part of um, of a school of thinkers known as the Sophists. And Sophists were um, proponents of the art of public speaking. Uh, a Sophist, sophistry is the art of speaking. And so Sophists were people who were well versed in speaking in such a manner that they could get, get people to believe that they were right emotionally, regardless of whether or not they were. Some have theorized that, or have characterized Gorgias as a nihilist or a nihilist, meaning that he believed in nothing. Um, he didn't believe that there was any truth, or no knowledge. Instead, what was true and what was false was what you could get people to believe in, regardless of whether or not it was true or not. And that's really the essence of political power, the ability to use emotional issues, to the ability to use the art of speaking, to use the tact of, <coughs> of language to get people to believe you're right. Of course, <clears throat> Socrates in this dialogue will challenge Gorgias, and Socrates will challenge Gorgias on the notion of whether or not you know, there is in fact no truth. Um, and he uses a, a method of question and answer that forces the, um, the individual to answer a series of questions that ultimately negates their own position. And I won't go into this too much, but ultimately Socrates believes that there are, that there is truth that is out there that we can obtain. And so he believes that the sophist kind of use of language to manipulate people away from real knowledge was a very devastating and bad thing to do for any representative society. Because, of course, in a representative society, you don't want people voting for people simply because the person stirs up emotions with them, right? In a representative society, we need voters to be able to think critically about issues. We need voters to vote on things not because of how it makes them feel, but on what they believe is right through a process of reason and critical analysis, right? Um, so... In, 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 a, in, a, in a representative society like our own, it's extremely important that we have critically thinking citizens. And that was really the lesson, in a way, that Socrates was, was demonstrating for us in this dialogue.
political science uh, is really the scientific study of politics. Um, political scientists are concerned with um, governing systems, with political ideologies. Um, they're, they're concerned with the decision-making processes of individuals in political positions. They're concerned with the functioning of domestic and international relations. They're interested in uh, political systems and governing systems. They're interested in looking at how different governments works, work. Uh, what are, the, um, what are the, uh, the problems and advantages of one system versus the other? Political scientists are interested in varying political ideologies and what political ideologies may offer um, uh, to particular candidates who are running for a particular position or how they may function in this respect. So a political scientist is concerned with studying politicians and studying the political system. And that goes down to not just the political system, but also to issues of international relations and so forth. But um, political scientists are very interested in studying why decision makers do what they do. Uh, why do uh, parties create certain types of platforms? What are their platforms? What types of people are encouraged to support these platforms and why? It's the scientific study of the political society that we live in. So it's a, it's, it's a highly significant study. And it's not to be confused with politics. Political science is not the same as politics. Politics is the pursuit of political power, of effectively governing control within a society. Political science is concerned with the study of the political society. Okay, I hope this is helpful, guys.